Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to solo Winter Grasp. Now this doesn't mean queuing for it and you're looking for group tool, this means going to the zone and soloing it all by yourself. Maybe there'll be another player there, but mostly soloing it by yourself. It's going to be a lengthy time, the video won't be that long, but uh, this will take quite a while to do on your own. I can't remember exactly what level you have to be to do this. Uh, I believe I started doing it in the high 60s. But if you want to know, you just need to get into the base at the start, whether you're Horde or Alliance. You can fly um, at the start and then get knocked off your mount, get into the base. If you kill a cannon and it gives you credit, um, then you can just you can do Winter Grass, basically. If, it's not, if you kill a cannon and you get nothing for it, then you're probably too low level. Um, getting credit, what that means is uh, basically uh, you'll get teleported to your base camp when it starts as well. That's another way to know, I guess, uh, level-wise. As soon as you're in Winter Grasp and it starts, if you get teleported to your base camp, then you're eligible to play Winter Grasp. Go into the base. You have to kill cannons right now for your first five kills for whatever reason. There's all kinds of bugs in here. I'm going to go over those. Um, so we're going to kill cannons. I recommend doing this on like a stealth class if you can, invisibility potions if you can. If not, you're going to want some kind of movement speed, um, jump ability, um, just survivability, good tank gear. You can do this at 120 as well. If you have really good gear, that'll help you out quite a bit. Um, you can still solo it if you're here for whatever reason. I'm here collecting herbs and stuff and leveling a character that way, collecting herbs and mining. Um, that's what a lot of people that I run into here are doing as well. So that's what I'm doing here, and that's how I ended up doing this. So we're going to kill five cannons uh, total here. You see me jump across um, to the other cannons and stealth to some more. And then uh, once we get five, our little PvP marker, which is next to my bear form buff, if you look at my buffs, um, that'll turn into a corporal, and I will be able to build a uh, little catapult thing. So... Um, We'll skip ahead here shortly to uh, when I head down south to do that. Again, oh, that's the other bug is you do have to build uh, currently build your vehicles down south, at least when you're attacking. Um, again, that's just a bug. That's not how Winter Grass was intended. So um, you might have tried this before and be like, I can't build vehicles. Well, that's why. So right here, I just reached Corporal, killed my fifth uh, cannon there. Now eventually, around the mark when I do it here, you'll be able to uh, uh, get on your mount, or if you're a druid, go flight form. And we're heading to the south. I like to attack from the west. You could technically do this exact same strategy from the east. Um, the west attack is technically better just because of um, the fortress graveyard, if there is a horde here. It doesn't really matter nowadays with flying mounts and the way you can fly here. Uh, it's just more of an old school. Uh, things stuck on my head. So you see you can parachute down pretty far. You can sometimes parachute all the way in depending on how you do it. And when we get in here you just go talk to the person. Again this is after you reach Corporal and you will be able to build a catapult. So why are we doing this? This is not to destroy the walls. This is what a lot of people make a mistake on. I've seen people hitting the walls with this. This is going to do nothing to the walls. Um, this is to level us up faster to Lieutenant. So I, I do recommend uh, shooting at range if you're going to be tanking them head on. If you're fighting the ones like here on the road, um, you can go ahead and start flaming them pretty much. And now we need to kill 10 of these to reach Lieutenant. I like to set myself as focus. Um, so in the top left will be your catapult. Right under it should be you. And then I like to set myself as focus so I can see my buff just to make sure I get to the 10. And it's keeping track because this place is buggy so it is possible that it won't give you credit for one. When you're doing this method, you need to definitely shoot your uh, catapult first before you flame, because otherwise uh, you might end up taking too much damage and losing your catapult, having to go get another one, or just going back inside and killing a couple more cannons. It doesn't really matter. Um, I do this. This is just the fastest way I can do it. At level 120, especially if you're like a tank, um, you could probably round up some of those guys. You can't pull them very far because they'll reset. That's the other thing with shooting the catapult. You can't uh, pull them too far, they will reset. Um, but if you're a tank, maybe you could tank them, is what I was going to say there. So here I just reached First Lieutenant, and now we're going to head right back down uh, to the same workshop we were just at in the south, and uh, we're going to build a Demolisher now. The uh, It's important to build the Demolisher because uh, the Siege Engine cannot shoot over the second wall, 
in uh, in the fortress, and that's what we're going to need to do, especially soloing it. You're not going to have much time. You technically would have probably just enough time to do that, um, but it's it's definitely faster to do it this way, uh, solo. So you're going to want to pick a demolisher here. Very important. And also on the walls, you're by yourself in theory doing this, so you're shooting your catapult and you're ramming it, or as a siege engine, you won't have someone in your back shooting, so you'll only have the ram. Obviously, the siege engine is stronger if you have uh, two people to man it, um, and I, I guess not technically, you know, two demolishers would be stronger uh, in theory then. But uh, so here's the wall we're going to go to. This is the basically northwest side. You could do the northeast side. The reason I choose this wall uh, is because it's not near a tower and it's kind of obfuscated a little bit. So basically if a horde was here just very casually not paying attention, not really caring that much, or lions, I say horde. When I say horde, I mean opposite faction. Um, not caring that much, they might not notice you over here. Whereas if you hit a tower at all, it's going to give it, you damage it. It gives a big notification across the screen that you damaged a tower. Then all of a sudden, uh, you know, that's there to basically be like, hey guys, someone's trying to kill your base. And then someone might come stop you that otherwise might not even care. Um, this will take about seven minutes to solo this wall this way, hitting your one and two constantly. So that first one, uh, I end up, uh, th this wall's about to die, and this is the, f uh, the first iteration of this recording. And I actually fail because um, there was a 120 that I... Honestly, I probably could have tried to just keep killing him with my Demolisher, but it just wasn't going to work. I was going to run out of time, because I have to keep going down south to get a new one, bring it all the way back up. Um, he, he would have killed it at least once, and even once can be pretty damning. So we're going to shoot it over the wall, but uh, I'll get attacked here shortly and die. So here's the second iteration. I actually have someone join my group who's also here. They're not too much help because they don't really know what to do and I didn't get a chance to tell him quick enough to build a demolisher and not a siege engine. So he wasn't able to help shoot over the wall with me. Uh, you'll see his siege engine come up here rather shortly. We also get attacked by the opposite faction on this one as well, but we're able to secure the victory anyways because it's later on in the process and I've already whittled down the, the final wall pretty well. So here you go inside. This is where you're going to want to set your demo. Uh, you can move your camera angle over this wall and you can see the main door and you're hitting it for a thousand damage each time with your catapult. My little buddy here in the siege engine is killing some guards and stuff that attack me um, and kind of just providing protection because he can't uh, shoot over the, the edge. You can get into the catapult of your demo, but um, I'm not sure if it reaches or not honestly. Uh, and even if it does, you know, I would still just use this demolisher anyways. Again, I'm going to eventually get attacked here, uh, but I'm able to get it down. You, you can see the health of this, uh, this door goes down much faster than the other one. Uh, so if the opposite faction does attack you, you can kill them pretty quickly. It's going to show doing lo really low damage to them based on their health. You see their health's really high and you're hitting them for like a couple thousand, but it actually does like a percentage of their health. So you're actually destroying them pretty quickly. So I was able to take care of him pretty well. And then I was able to get the door almost dead before I get attacked um, some more. I actually get attacked, I get him down low health, he runs away, gets his health up, comes back. And by that time, the door is almost completely destroyed, uh, which is right now. So you see the door is down right there. I get attacked, I probably could have just killed him, which is probably what I should have done. Instead I get out and I get one shot. Um, and then they actually, the hunter goes and clicks the thing and secures victory here shortly. He probably just flew in on his mount uh, to secure the victory there. So Alliance wins. I'll show you exa uh, more accurately how to do this, though, um, without having the circle there to actually click, unfortunately. So if you're a horde player, this is what the, the base will look like for you. And this is what this final room will look like for you. This is the biggest reason why I said stealth or tank or movement um, is key here. It's because there will be a lot of guards in this room and we're skipping over them by shooting over the wall. So this is what the guards will look like if you're Horde because the Alliance control it right now. So you can kind of sneak in on the left side here easily. If you're an Alliance player like me, there's a guard on each side of the stairs and then a, a stronger stealthing guard that pats across. You just want to get in there as fast as you can. You can also just mount in as well. If you go outside and mount, you can just mount in and go and click the giant circle in the room there. There'll be a big circle in the middle of the room. You just click it and then you, you win. So... That's it for that. Uh, it's a little bit of a lengthy thing, but it is pretty simple once you get the hang of it. 
um, and hopefully you don't have too much trouble doing this. So uh, please subscribe to the channel because that helps me out a ton. And everybody, have a good one.